going on y'all welcome back to conversations with carrie and i feel like i start every video like this like i know how long it's been but child listen life has been lifing okay i actually got that from a business partner life has been lifing so you know what it's just me jesus and this weave child we just gonna keep riding it out okay <laughs> but seriously i am here today to talk to you about leadership. I wrote about this recently on my blog over on carrielee.com, so please go visit that, take a look. I'll put the link down below. And let's be clear, I'm not about to give you some LinkedIn version of like what leadership is. Nah, child, we about to have some real conversation because y'all know how I do. So let's talk about leadership. I think we're actually all called to be leaders, but um, I've uh, worked in retail and actually since my like mid 20s, I've been working in retail and leading others. And I once, I remember somebody said like a long time ago that uh, leadership is a version of adult babysitting. And Chad, I almost want to pass out. That's that's the very very accurate. Okay, because sometimes we're like, listen, how do you how do you even do anything? Because why am I having to follow up on everything? But I think about the different type of leaders that um, that you know many of you are, as well as I've been in the past. Sometimes we're leaders in our friend circle. Um, sometimes we're leaders um, in the, like a voluntary uh, capacity. So maybe at church or, you know, in the community service group or in a sports team. Um, of course, I mentioned like being related to work, but like leadership shows up in a lot of different ways. You know, there's so much to being a leader and leader does have this like positive points. Like it's nothing like like seeing somebody that you've been like training or developing and they grow and they flourish and they do such great things and they even surpass your talent or they, they go beyond you. I love seeing that. Like that gets me hyped. Or I love seeing people just walk in their fullest potential and, you know, just be like thriving. And you're like, yes, like I'm in a position where I can, prom you know, promote or I've been in positions before also where I can like promote others. And it, it gives me joy to promote others um, and just, you know, let them shine. Let them be in the limelight. Like I love that. That's such a big part of leadership. But as we know, um, that's not all of leadership and oftentimes when it comes to being a leader you develop and you grow stronger in your leadership by encountering trials and ugh, even saying this sometimes i'm like lord not another one but yes trials allow you to develop perseverance and endurance and character the bible talks about that and how important it is that without that you may not reach your fullest potential so if you're encountering leadership trials of any kind right now know that God is working in your life like the Lord is doing something and I know oftentimes we want to like roll our eyes and be like "Ugh!" but as we know as a leader we have to go high when they go low and we know Michelle Obama said it but I, I'm, I'm talking about high high like heavenly high like Jesus Christ to high on the throne interceding on my behalf high or I'm talking about um, you better be glad I know Jesus because if you had met me a few years ago I would have probably unleashed on you kind of high like I, I'm talking about like just rising above it all and that's what's required in true leadership you have to move beyond your emotions you have to move beyond your anger you have to move beyond your pride set all that aside and think about okay well what is what am I doing for the greater good y'all already know I'm gonna take it to the word okay I've been studying King David and I love King David like when I get to heaven I'm just gonna be like what you got to say um actually no I'm gonna be somewhere praising the Lord but still like if King David, if I could talk to him and have a full, a full conversation, because if you think about Psalms and just uh, so many parts of the Bible show his humanness and that he he was just, you know, he cried out to God when he struggled and he let us know his emotional state, all of it. So anyway, I love me some King David. And I was actually reading in Second Samuel, oh, no, sorry, First Samuel chapter 30. And it's really about when David is coming back to Ziklag. And y'all know, We've talked about me and how I pronounce things, but I, th I think I'm okay today. I don't have any like specific names, but David was living in Ziklag. This is when he was still um, in the wilderness. He's coming towards the end of his time. I don't think he knew it was the end of his time uh, to take over as the king of Israel because King Saul had been hunting him to kill him. So he spent years in the wilderness and he had been given this area of land for, you know, for his team, him and his warriors to dwell until his time to take the throne. And so they were actually going out and they were about to have to fight the Philistines or no, excuse me, they were going to fight with the Philistines. 
um, and they were going to have to possibly fight their countrymen. But, you know, basically Philistines was like, we don't trust you, David. And he was like, what have I done to make you not trust me? I mean, other than kill Goliath. Um, you know, so he, he's like, cool, all right, bet. I'm, we just going to go on home. I'm going to take me and my men, my warriors. We're going to go on home. But when they get home, everything's gone. Like their wives, their children, their livestock, all their like wealth is gone. And the entire city was burned. So let's pause there for a moment and be like, are you kidding me? Can you imagine being a leader during that day and age where like for one, he was already being hunted and you know, he knew that he was anointed king. However, he wasn't even able to go become the king. So he was somewhere hiding in the wilderness and he's got these band of people who are like ruthless men who, you know, around here, they're killing everybody left and right as is necessary, you know, to get, do whatever they need to do. And he has to leave during that time. As he's like, you know, they're all crying. They're like, oh my gosh, my children, all my baby mama, like, oh dang, you know, just complete, just emotional state. And then these fools are trying to stone King David. You hear me? They like, oh yeah, we, they just completely turned against him and they're talking about stoning them. And this is where David demonstrates true leadership. It says, actually, let me read it to you, shall we? Um, so in, again, chapter 30, verse six, it says, moreover, David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him. For all the people were embittered, each one because of his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. Oh, come on, leadership. Come on. You better use wisdom and some humility because quietly, let me tell you, let me, y'all see how high pitched I got, but let me tell you, because when you're faith, when you're a leader, you have to always choose the high road and you can't lower yourselves to the people who maybe are, they're responding emotionally or they're lashing out at you. But when you've been called to lead, then you, you can't stoop to the level of everybody else because David could have been like, how dare you? You know, he could have been like, I'm, I'm the king. I'm about to be the new king. How dare you speak of stoning me? I kept y'all alive. My wisdom and my strategy has kept y'all alive all this time. He could have went there and been pretty justified. But again, what would have been talking? His pride what would have been talking his anger his frustration, his distress, that's what they were talking through. So as we have to think about as being leaders, especially leaders of others, we, we have to go higher. We cannot lower ourselves to their standard. I love that David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. He inquired of the Lord and it says down in verse eight, David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue this band? Shall I overtake them? And he, God, said to him, pursue, for you will surely overtake them and you will surely rescue all. Oh, like, I love that he sought the Lord. Like, Lord, let me get permission from you first. Shall I go and overtake them? Because y'all, David was a warrior. Let's not get it twisted. He's been a warrior from his youth when he was out there shepherding the sheep and the bear and the lion came and he was like, yeah, I grabbed him by his beard. Like, David is nobody's punk. It says in 1 Samuel 30, again, in chapter 30, um, I think it's verse 18. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken and rescued his two wives. But nothing of theirs was missing, whether small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything that they had taken for, from, for themselves. David brought it all back. Like God is such a restorer here. His men were ready to kill him. And now he's like, okay, instead of me trying to prove to you why I know what I'm doing and I'm a great King. Instead, let me seek the Lord. Lord was like, yep, boom, go on and kill him. I'm going to give you the victory. And then he gets everything back, everything back. Now he also got his two wives and you know, just because the Bible mentions it doesn't mean it's a good thing. Um, so, you know, we're going to talk about that another day. Um, but he got everything back. I love this because, you know, it was a trial moment. It was a, you know, he had been in the wilderness all this time. So constantly he was building his endurance and his character. And it's moments like this where it's like, had he not dealt with that, that wilderness, how he had he not dealt with that issue, he might not have turned to the God at the time when he needed it most. And had he maybe done something else, like was like, oh, y'all thinking of uh, stoning me and pulled the sword out and was ready to get the slicing and dicing, everything could have been ruined. And he, they never would have got their family back. And they probably would, a lot of them would have died. So I love that he used his experience. He knew to seek the Lord. 
there's a lot of times that we want to respond emotionally or we want to go with our gut response, but your gut response is not always the best response. If you're not listening to the Holy Spirit, and we have a helper, we have the Holy Spirit, the comforter living inside of us to be able to direct us. That was not present during the time. So the fact that he was like in this, in a state of complete emotional distress, he was like, oh, I know where to go. I'm going to know, I'm going to go to the source who has my help, who, who is my help, who will direct me on what to do. Listen, I get it. Being a leader is not easy. Like you feel like ugh, the expectancy and sometimes you just want to be, <laughs> you want to be a little ratchet. You want to do some stuff, you know, you ain't got no business doing, but I'm telling you, when you spend time in your word, like it will just naturally pour out of you. The word will pour out at a time where you're thinking, dang, the, the old Carrie would have said something totally different or reacted totally different to that situation. But no, when the Lord is living inside of you, because he's got it taken care of, you don't have to worry. You don't have to fret. He had, he saw you at this place. He saw this moment beforehand. He saw you before you were even born or you were being for, uh, formed in your mom's womb. Like the Lord has all these plans set up for you. So if you're spending time with him, you're going to learn his character and that's going to come out of you first. So it's going to be very easy to go high when they go low. So I ask that you are encouraged today, especially if you are a leader of others, share this with somebody. I hope that they, or maybe you want, one day you want to be leading others. Know that this, this Bible, this word has everything that you need. And I'm talking about everything, every situation that you can imagine you've encountered, it's in here some kind of way. Um, and I love King David. If you have not studied him, please take the time to just dig into God's word and learn about King David. There's so much. He, he was just such a real and he wasn't perfect. That's what I love about him as well. He was nobody's perfect. I, I think he was probably fine though. I think they, King David was fine. But I, I want you to just, just really enjoy this word and enjoy what the Lord has to share. And I hope that you are encouraged. I hope that as you face different situations at work or you know in your community service, whatever it may be, that you can really serve as a leader and go high when they go low. Take care.